Thomas's discovery, a Thomas the Tank Engine story. One morning, the Fat Controller and his grandchildren came to see Thomas. Come along, Thomas, he said. We're going to the seaside, so we will arrive. So we will be on board. So we will go and so we will have a ride on Henrietta. Yes, sir, said Thomas happily. Thomas took him, and with that, Thomas and Thomas and everyone arrived at arrived at the beach. So Thomas pop. So Thomas stopped at the sea at the small seaside station, and with that, the fat controller were watching his grandchildren. The fat controller was watching his grandchildren, and there he could watch was the grandchildren making a very splendid castle. On that said the fat controller, is a fine splendid castle. So have you seen a real castle like this? We have, said the children, and they showed him the map. Hmm, said the fat controller. And with that they met Thomas again and said this to Thomas. We're going to the castle, he said. So take us there on Annie and Clarabelle. Yes, sir, said Thomas, and Thomas and Thomas puffed away to the castle. They arrived, they arrived at an old, they arrived at an old signal box and the signal man was talking to the fat controller. Where are you going? He asked. We're going to a castle, he said. Can you show us the way? Can you show us the way? He said and the fat controller gave him the map. Next door to the scrapyard and then to the, next door to the scrapyard and then to uh, the castle, he said. That will lead you there. Find you, said the fat controller. And with that, Thomas and everyone continued along again to go to the castle. When Thomas arrived, he arrived at, he arrived at a junction with two green, green signs. One in green that says to the castle, and the and the number two one in green that says to the mine. We'll go to castle first, said the fat controller, and so Thomas did. They arrived at the castle, and they and with the and with that the fat controller looked at the at the old castle, and decided something, and decided something after that. We'll, we'll visit the mine, he said, and and he and they did a lot once long ago, and the old mine was once was once part of part of uh, some someone's old railway and was no longer and was no long known to and was no longer known to a city or a railway and and everything became rustier, uh, became rusty and old and overgrown. The fat controller was still looking, was still looking at the site of the mine. Thomas was so scared that something might happen, and then after that he was glad that it was time to go home. And then he was glad that it was time to go home. Sheds where Thomas and his friends were resting, the fat controller came to see Thomas again. The, the castle and the mine will make a fine place for the visitors to visit, he said, and now our plan will be able to work. Yes, sir, said Thomas ner uh, Yes, sir, said Thomas nervously and decided to go there again. And with that, the fat controller's work was on plan B, was on plan B, and, but Thomas was worried and scared, and, but Thomas was worried and scared, and, and he didn't want to stay at the mines all day and all night. He think they'll, they'll be, they'll, he'll think it will be cold in here, but, but, Thomas didn't want to talk, Thomas didn't want to talk. So he decided to talk about going back to his nice warm shed. I just still, I'm scared of staying in the mines ten, 
off. I'm scared off tonight, he said. This place sure is sure to be haunted, he said. Well, it's our turn to stay here tonight, said Thomas's driver. Beware of the up. Beware of the ghost, Thomas, said Stanley. What ghost, said Thomas? The old warrior. He lit. Every night he lifts up his fire and hunts engines down. So two, two, goodbye. And Stanley puffed away. Except Thomas, who was feeling really scared. Night came, and Thomas was still scared. And still he was, and still he was keeping an eye on the mine. He and his driver were still busy, when suddenly Thomas heard an old wheezing sound. It's the, it's the ghost, said Thomas. His driver and fireman jumped. What ghost, said his driver. It's the old warrior, said Thomas. It's come, he's come to hunt me down. Don't be so daft, said his driver. There is no ghost. Your you'll you'll fireman and I will investigate said the driver. After that, after when they investigated, Thomas's driver and fireman said this to Thomas. The old warrior wants to meet you, he said. Can't we wait till morning, said Thomas. Ghosts don't work in the, in mornings, he sa said his driver. Only night times, he said. And so Thomas crept bravely and next to the old book and next to a, a little engine. Well, 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 bus my buffers, he said. Next to him was an old narrow gauge engine. <laughs> and next to him was an old, was an old narrow gauge engine. And with that, and with that, the, the signal man said this to Thomas. That's your ghost, Thomas, he said. His name is Bertram. We sometimes call him the old warrior because he's brave. Because he's brave. So he might be your ghost, or maybe not, he said. And with that, Thomas agreed. So did Bertram. And with that, and with that, they agreed that it was only Bertram. And, and sometimes he's called the Sometimes he's called uh, the old warrior because he's brave. So Thomas, and so Thomas laughed. Even the signalman and the driver and fireman, and, and so did the driver and fireman indeed. Thomas was the Thomas was supplied. Thomas was surprised. So was Bertram, the old warrior. Thomas and Bertram were now one firm friends. They take the visitors to the mines and the castle, and now finally Thomas and Bertram realize that there's nothing spooky every night with inside the mines, only in scurvy stories. And with that, Thomas knew, Thomas realized that Bertram only wanted to stay in this railway while it's comfortable. And with that, he can... He can sometimes be called both Bertram and the, and the old warrior, but Thomas prefers be, but Thomas might prefer him being called Bertram. And with that, Thomas and Bertram were still friends, but now on really useful engines on the island of Sodor.